Hello friends, welcome to This Day in Jack Benny. I'm John Henderson. This episode is from May 8th, 1949. Previously on the Jack Benny Show... Oh, a letter from your mother, eh? Uh Uh-huh. My darling daughter, Mary. We really don't mind Willie, as he's very little bother. His biggest biggest competitor is the United States government. (laughs) Your mother writes them all right, you just can't read them. (laughs) Hello, Phil. Last week you told me you were going to buy a new car. What kind did you get? I didn't get any, Phil, but I may get a new one this summer. Well, look, be sure you get one of them new models that comes equipped with the Dynaflex Superflowing Unijet Turbo Vasculator, which is synchro meshed with the multi-coil hydro tension duo vacuum dyno motor. <laughs> <laughs> Now, where were we? Well, you were casting the play we're going to do. Oh, yes, the treasure of the Sierra Madre. Oh, well, we got to be getting along, old timer. You sure you don't want to come with us? Nope, but I'll see you later. You will? Yep, I come back on page 12 as a Mexican bandit. <laughs> Jack Benny jokes in this episode about his Hooper ratings. In reality, he had a 22.9 this season, making him the third most popular show after the Lux Radio Theater and Fibber McGee and Molly. Number 17 was the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Hey, Bud, could you spare five bucks for a guy who needs a curly? <laughs> hello, Oh, hello, Alice. I didn't recognize Wait you. Wait a minute, Remy. What's the idea of Pam Hand? Just trying to raise enough money to send my dear old mom a gift for Mother's Day. Oh, that's sweet, Frankie. Alice, he's trying to raise money to pay his bookie. He owes him $134. What are you going to send her? A shawl, a knitting bag, or... No, no, I have a sentimental custom. I send her money, a dollar for every year of her life. Oh, now, Frankie, that's a wonderful idea, and I'll lend you the money. How old is your mother? 134. <laughs> A Day in the Life of Dennis Day came in at number 22. He also made a couple of guest appearances on the Kraft Music Hall with Al Jolson. Well, I want to buy my mother something for Mother's Day. Oh, that's a fine thought. So you came over to get a suggestion from me, eh? No, I came over to get some money from you. (laughs) Now, Dennis, wait a minute. You shouldn't need money. You have two radio shows. You have your own program, and you're on every Sunday with Jack Benny. Yeah, but my money is all tied up. What do you mean, tied up? It's all tied up in Mr. Benny's handkerchief. (laughs) I wondered why the other day after Jack mopped his brow, it said E Pluribus Unum on his forehead. Eddie Cantor's radio show was sponsored by Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. The Eddie Cantor Pabst Blue Ribbon Show. Who is he? Who can he be? Who? How do you do? Gordon, the mad Russian. Let me be the first to ignore you. Eddie Cantor also wrote an article in Cosmopolitan magazine praising his friend Jack Benny. In magazines and newspapers, you would find many print ads for products like Dr. Scholl's Xeno Pads, Protect Sore Toes from Tight Shoes, Relieve Pain and Quickly Remove Corns, or Bromo Seltzer, Fast Help for Headaches, Upset Stomachs, and Jumpy Nerves, meaning it was great for hangovers. In the news this past week, there was an enormous fire at the Hollywood Park racetrack. Flames over Hollywood as one of California's most spectacular fires destroys the grandstand and clubhouse of the Hollywood Park racetrack. And this upcoming week, the USSR was set to lift its blockade of Berlin. The first outstanding victory in the Cold War between East and West is the end of the 10-month blockade of Berlin. The steady stream of trucks start the movement of supplies, and though the magnificent American and British airlift had fed Berliners, they are no longer on short rations. And finally, a song. Even though you're only making living laugh clown, laugh. Even though something inside is grieving, laugh clown, laugh. If you'd like to hear more great episodes of Jack Benny, check out thisdaybenny.com. And enjoy the show. The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Feeling low. Feeling tense. These eight words are common sense. Smoke a lucky. To be your level best. Smoke a lucky. To be your level best. Me.
millions of smokers are learning that Lucky's Fine Tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. That's what fine tobacco can do for you. And L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, puff by puff, pack by pack, you'll really enjoy this fine, light, naturally mild Lucky Strike tobacco. And you'll agree that Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike, and get on the lucky level where you feel and do your level best. Yes, smoke a Lucky to feel your level best. <laughs> The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester Davis Day, and yours truly, Don Wolf. Ladies and gentlemen, on last Sunday's broadcast, we presented our version of that great Warner Brothers picture, The Treasure of Sierra Madre. Immediately after that, the orchestra played our theme song. As we went off the air, here's exactly what happened. All right, Phil, hold it. Phil, hold it. We're off the air. Tell your boys to stop. Hey, that's enough, fellas. Stop. Cut. Quit already. All right, boys, go home. Stop it. Sammy, stop. <laughs> now, look. I don't want anybody to leave the stage. I want to talk to the entire cast. Is there anything wrong, Mr. Benny? Yes, there's plenty wrong, Dennis. Now, look. I don't want to get mad. I don't want to lose my temper. But the broadcast we just finished was one of the sloppiest shows I've ever heard. Everyone fluffing their lines, missing their cues. Well, all right, Jack. It's over. Let's forget it. We won't forget it, Mary. In fact, I want to talk to you first. To me? Yes. I can't understand what happened to you when you read your mother's letter. I haven't heard you get words so mixed up since that time in the restaurant when you ordered a chiss sui sandwich. <laughs> no, really, it was awful. Well, I, I'm sorry, Jack, but I just couldn't help it. Yesterday, the dentist put a new gold crown on one of my teeth, and it bothers me when I speak. Look, Mary, I don't want any excuses. I'm just telling you that a gold crown? <laughs> yes. What happened to your old one? You kissed me and it melted. <laughs> Gee, I didn't know I... Oh, don't be funny. <laughs> and now for you, Phil. During the program, you made a mistake that almost ruined a big laugh. I did? Yes. You were supposed... <laughs> Look, Phil. You were supposed to say that your new car came equipped with a Dynaflex superflowing Unijet turbovasculator, which is synchromesh with the multi-coil hydrotension dual vacuum dynamometer. Uh-huh. But instead of that, Instead of that, Phil, you said your new car came equipped with a Dynaflex superflowing Unijet turbovasculator, which is synchromesh with a multi-coil hydrotension dual vacuum Dynamama Mater. Imagine Dynamama Mater. I said that? <laughs> you certainly did. Holy smoke, and I stayed on the wagon all week to get that line right. <laughs> Well, I'll give you one more chance, Phil. Read it now. Jackson, I wouldn't read that line again if you name me in your will. A will? What's that? That's when you leave your money to somebody. <laughs> Whoever started a silly thing like that? <laughs> now, let's see, uh... Who else made a mistake? Oh, yes, Dennis. Go ahead, whip me, beat me, torture me, but I'll carry on. Laugh, clown, laugh. <laughs> Dennis, stop that. <laughs> okay. Did I do something wrong on today's show, Mr. Benny? Yes, you did, Dennis. In our sketch, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, I let you play two parts, didn't I? Yes, sir. But when you play the old prospector, you put in a line that wasn't even in the script. Yes, sir. You said, so long, I'll see you on page 12 when I come back as a Mexican bandit. <laughs> Didn't you? Si, senor. Stop. 
Now, if it wasn't in the script, why did you say you were coming back later? Well, my mother was listening, and I didn't want her to tune out. Wait a minute. You mean your mother only listens to the part of the program that you're on? Yeah, she thinks you're awful. <laughs> Look, Dennis. She said if you didn't have the mortgage on our house, she'd slap your silly face. <laughs> All right, I didn't keep you here to discuss my real estate holdings. The, top, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is this. If there's going to be any more ad-libbing on this program, I'll be the one to do it. Oh, fine. What? You couldn't ad-lib there off if you were at the Kentucky Derby and your suspenders broke. <laughs> suspenders broke, suspenders broke. Mary, don't be so smart. You can be replaced, you know. There are plenty of other girls in the May Company that can read lines. <laughs> now, kids, I wasn't bawling you out. I just wanted you to be a little more careful. Well, That's Jack, it. you didn't say anything to me. Does that mean I read my lines right? Yes, Don, you read your lines perfectly. But I do have one little complaint about the way you stand on the stage. What do you mean? Well, when the sportsman quartet came on to do their number, you were standing in front of the microphone blocking them. Now, you should have stepped aside. But, Jack, I did step aside. No, no, Don. The part that had legs stepped aside. The rest of you stayed. <laughs> now, watch it next time, pear shape. <laughs> hey, gang, how about all of us going over to the drugstore for a sandwich? That is, if Mr. Benny has concluded the chastisement of his fellow thespians. <laughs> Phil, did that, uh, did that come out of you? Certainly. What's so unusual about me knowing words of more than one cylinder? That cylinder! <laughs> A cylinder is something round and hollow, like your head. <laughs> now, kids, you go to the drugstore, and I'll meet you yet later. I gotta go to my dressing room and change. Gee, I hated to ball them out, but I just had to. I hope I wasn't too harsh with them. Especially Phil. He's so sensitive. <laughs> oh, hello, Rochester. Oh, hello, boss. I didn't know you were in my dressing room. What are you doing with that typewriter? Just what you told me to do. I'm making out the weekly payroll. Oh, yes. You go ahead and finish while I change clothes. Yes, sir. Mary Livingston and 40 cents. <laughs> Oh, Rochester, where are my shoes? Uh, under the couch. Phil Harris and 30 cents. I don't see my shoes. Oh, yes, here they are. Don Wilson and 50 cents. Rochester Van Jones and 12 cents. <laughs> Say, Rochester, have you made out Dennis Day's salary check yet? Uh, no, boss, I'm just coming to it. Oh, good. I want you to add $2 to Dennis's check. Well, that's nice. Did you give him a raise? No, we burned one of his shirts ironing it. <laughs> <laughs> so while you're at it, deduct a dollar from your check and a dollar from mine. Next time, we won't be so careless. <laughs> By the way, Rochester, did you have the radio on? Uh-huh. Were you listening to my program? Uh-huh. What'd you think of it? We better stop burning shirts. <laughs> You're right, Rochester. Well, I'm all dressed. Step aside, please. I want to use the mirror. Okay. Uh, here's your comb, boss. Thanks. Here's your hair. <laughs> Thanks. Gee, I look tall. Take the old one off first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going, Rochester. And before you leave, hang my clothes up in the closet, will you please? Yes, sir. You know, it was nice of CBS to fix up this dressing room for me and put in all this plumbing. Boss, the plumbing was here. They just built the dressing room around it. <laughs> Oh, then I guess the whisk room was left over, too. <laughs> well, see you later, Rochester. So long. Uh-oh. 
Uh, Rochester, while you're at the typewriter, I wish you'd jot down the words, they're off. They're off? What's that, boss? It's something I want to add lib in case my suspenders ever break at the Kentucky (laughs) Derby. So long. Oh, boss, boss! What is it, Rochester? I forgot to tell you while you were on the air, Mr. Hooper called. Hooper? You're telling me you were listening to my program? He didn't care about that. He called about his shirts. <laughs> oh, well, they won't be ready till Monday. Gee, I remember the time I burned Mr. Hooper's shirt. My rating went down to 9.2. <laughs> or was it 2.9? <laughs> oh, well, that was weeks ago. Now my rating is back to 11. Or is it 1.1? <laughs> Oh, well. Oh, Jack, Jack. Huh? Where are you, Don? Well, here in my dressing room with the quartet. Oh. I thought you went over to the drugstore with the gang. Oh, the boys and I are just playing a little gin rummy. Oh, hello, fellas. Mm. Mm. Say, uh, Jack, I'm terribly sorry there were so many mistakes made on the program today. Well, I am too, Don, and frankly, I haven't been so upset after a broadcast in years. Well, mistakes can happen. Don't let it bother you. I know, Don, but my whole gang has been with me for years. There's no excuse for such carelessness. I really was burned up. Well, Jack, the next time there's anything that upsets you, there's only one thing to do. What's that? Tell him, boys. Powder your face with sunshine. Put on a great big smile. Fill those blue eyes with laughter. I'm not mad, Folks fellas. We'll be laughing with you in a little while. Look at I'm over Powder it already. Your face with luckies. They always are in style. Get on that level. That lucky man will smile, smile, smile. Look, I'm smiling. I'm Fill smiling. Up the place with lucky. I'm not worried. Never feel low or tense. They're made of fine tobacco. And you will find that all these words make common sense. Dynaflex super flowing. What? Hydromesh Unijet. Boys, look. And need we mention that hydrotension? Yes. I bet that's think. not in the song. Turbo vasculator, Dynamama Mater. That's Dynamometer. Yes. <laughs> Boys, the commercial. That lucky level, so smile, smile, smile. Well, thanks, John. Thanks. I feel better already. Well, see you later, fellas. The gang is waiting for me at the drugstore. Drugstore's always so crowded. Yeah, but they know me here. We'll get served right away. Watch. I prepared this as soon as you came in, Mr. Harris. Here's your Broma Seltzer. <laughs> Thanks. Shall I put two straws in it, or isn't Mr. Emily with you? <laughs> now, wait a minute, bud. I don't want no Bromo Seltzer. Oh, I'll drink it. Dennis, why do you need a Bromo? I went to a party last night, Liv. <laughs> a party? Boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Did we have fun. We played spin the bottle, post office, hide and go seek, and sister, did I get stiff. What? I hid in the deep freeze and nobody found me. (laughs) If you folks would like to sit at the counter, there are three empty seats now. The waiter will take care of you. Oh, yeah. Come along, Miss Livingstone. (laughs) Just a minute, Phil. I'm buying a magazine. Okay, I'll go over and hold the seat. Here's your change, miss. No, thank you. Come on, Dennis. Oh, just a minute, Mary. I'm weighing myself. Oh, boy, look at this little card that came out. Well, what does the card say? Go to the races. You may get hot at Hollywood Park. <laughs> oh, Dennis. Come on. Right over here, Libby. Say, Phil, look. There's an article in this Cosmopolitan about Jack, and it's written by Eddie Cantor. No kidding. What's it say? Oh, get this opening line. Contrary to the Marsley character he assumes on the radio, Jack Benny in real life is the most generous man I've ever met. (laughs) Eddie Cantor wrote that about Jackson? Hey, Libby, 
freeze again, will you? <laughs> Contrary to the Marsley character he assumes on the radio, Jack Benny in real life is the most generous man I've ever met. Let me see that magazine, baby. Contrary to the miserly character he assumes on the radio... Phil. Jack Benny in real life... Phil. ...is the most generous man I ever met and... Phil. Huh? You got the magazine upside down. <laughs> All right, so I memorized it. <laughs> but imagine anyone saying that Jackson is generous. Well, I think Mr. Benny is very generous. When I first went to work for him, he only paid me $35 a week. What are you getting now? $37. <laughs> Oh, I gave you a raise. No, he burned one of my shirts. <laughs> oh, Dennis, what are you... Do- Uh-oh, I gotta leave you, kids. There's Remley. Well, I didn't know Remley had a car. That ain't no car. He's got a cold. So long, kids. I'll see you. <laughs> Say, Dennis, let's look at the menu so we can... Dennis. Where is that kid? Dennis! Oh, I'm over here by the jukebox. Would you like to hear my recording of Little Mother of Mine? Oh, I'd love to. Okay. Sometimes in the hush of the evening hour When shadows creep from the west I think of the twilight songs you sang And the boy you loved to rest A wee little boy with tousled head That long, long ago was I I in the drugstore. They all applauded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they all applauded. Here I am, kids. Did you order yet? Oh, not yet, Jack. We're waiting for you. Oh, good, good. I'll get the menu. Oh, waiter. Waiter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> May we have a menu, please? Yes, certainly. Here you are. Well, thanks. Now, let's see... Oh, waiter, why have you got all those steering wheels attached to the counter? Those are for people who like to eat in drive-ins and can't afford cars. (laughs) Cars? The one on the end is a convertible. (laughs) What? If you press the button, the roof comes down. Oh, be quiet! Why do I always run into this crazy guy? 
I don't know what I want to eat. Dennis, what are you going to order? A hamburger sandwich and check my oil. <laughs> Dennis, stop going along with the waiter. Now, let's see. What do I want? Yeah, are you people going to order, or are you waiting for the floor show? A floor show in a drugstore? Yes. At 8 o'clock, Dr. Scholl comes out and does a fan dance with two foot pads. <laughs> Dr. Scholl? He's corny, but he's good. <laughs> now, shut that up! <laughs> Just take our orders, and that's all. We'll have three hamburgers. Now, go get them. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. I don't want a hamburger. Well, you can have anything you like. What do you want? A chisui sandwich. <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! Stop yelling at the girl. We make wonderful chisui sandwiches. <laughs> You do? Yeah. Well, then I'll try a chisweed sandwich. Would you like me to crim the truss? <laughs> yes, yes, crim the truss. I don't know why I ever come in this place. The service is awful. The waiter's so... Oh, for heaven's sake, look at that. Waiter, come back here. Now what? Now what? Look at this glass. There's lipstick on it. Well, there's water in it. Wash it off. <laughs> Wash it off yourself! <laughs> you know, Mary, I've never seen such a fresh waiter in all my life. Hey, mister, would you mind moving your elbow so I can get the sugar? I don't know why I came in here anyway. We never can get a booth. We always have to sit at the counter. Mister, would you move your elbow so I can get the sugar? <laughs> Believe me, Mary, this is the last time I'm ever... Hey, go look, bud, I'm trying to get the sugar. What? Would you mind lifting your blockade or do I have to wait till May the 12th? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Here you are. Now, Mary, as soon oh, as we... Oh, Jack, eat... Jack, look who just came in. Who? Well, what do you know? Eddie Cantor. Eddie, Eddie, come here. Hiya, Jack. Hello, Mary. <laughs> well, sit down, Eddie. Have a sandwich or something. Thanks, Jack. Eddie, you know Dennis Day. Sure, sure. Hello, Dennis. Well, Eddie Camper, how do you do? <laughs> Dennis, stop. Come on, Eddie. What are you going to have? Well, I'm not very hungry, but, waiter, I'll have a sandwich, uh, chicken sandwich and an ice cream soda. Yeah, very good, sir. What flavor? The usual. A glass of Pat Blue Ribbon with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. <laughs> Eddie, ice cream and beer? Isn't that an odd combination? Look, Jack, do I say anything when you break six lucky strikes into a bowl and call it the breakfast of champions? <laughs> well, to each his own, I guess. Say, Eddie, that was a nice article you wrote about Jack and the Cosmopolitan. It certainly was, Eddie, and I want to thank you. It was a very honest piece. I'm glad you liked it, Jack. Did you read the part where I said, contrary to the miserly character he assumes on the radio, Jack Benny in real life is the most generous man I've ever met? Yes, I did, Eddie, and only a man like you, who has known me all my life, can appreciate the finer side of my character. Hey, Mary, you want to split a bromo Celta? <laughs> No, my head's all right. It's my stomach that bothers me. <laughs> Mary, please. Mary, you may think I'm exaggerating about Jack's generosity, but I'll never forget that day in 1928 when he first played the Palace Theater in New York. After the opening performance, Jack walked into Lindy's restaurant and yelled, Okay, fellas, I'll buy drinks for everybody. Buy drinks in 1928? Prohibition wasn't repealed until 1933. Jack was willing to wait. <laughs> Yeah. Here your orders. Will there be anything else? No, thanks. That'll be all. Say, Eddie, speaking of the palace in New York, remember the fun we used to have in Vaudeville together? Oh, yeah. Jack, remember the time? <laughs> what? What, Eddie? What? What? Remember the time you made a blind date over the phone and you asked the girl if she could bring a friend for me? And she said, yes, yeah, she'd bring her sister? Yeah. <laughs> She had to. They were Siamese twins. <laughs> yeah, they were in Vaudeville, too. They had a great act. They were, their names were Doris and Dorothy Ace. They were billed as aces back to back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dennis. Uh, Dennis, I'll have that Bromo Seltzer now. 
Oh, I said he those were the days. Good old boy. We used to see a lot of each other then. Oh, yeah. Say, look, Jack, why don't you and Mary come over to my house for dinner next Saturday night? Oh, I'd love to, Eddie. Me too. Good. You see, it's my birthday and we're having a few friends over. Your birthday, eh? How old are you going to be, Eddie? Uh... <laughs> oh, come on, Eddie. Tell me, what's the difference? How old are you going to be? How old am I going to be? What's the use of kidding, Jack? Everyone else I can lie to, but not you. You know my right age. You know I'm even older than you. Well, I know, I know, but how old are you going to be? Forty. <laughs> well, me next. <laughs> I was just wondering, how old... Now, this is just between you and me, you know. How old do you think Al Jolson is? I don't know, but Ida is his daughter. <laughs> no kidding. Well, I've got to run along, Jack. Oh, waiter, waiter. Yes? Uh, my check, please. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, Eddie. Get your hand out of your pocket. Huh? I asked you to sit here. This is on me. No, 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 Jack. You were here already, and I horned in. Waiter, give me my check. Oh, no, you don't. Look, Eddie, we've been friends for years. You wrote this wonderful article about me, and now you want to spoil the whole thing. Waiter, how much is Mr. Cantor's check? It's 65 cents. After all, Eddie, I... 65 cents? <laughs> For what? <laughs> all we had was a chicken sandwich and a glass of beer. Jack, I'll pay for you it. You will not. He wrote the article about me. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, waiter, how can this bill be 65 cents? All he had was a chicken sandwich and a glass of beer. If he had the beer, why are you foaming at the mouth? <laughs> you keep out of this. Now, waiter, this is outrageous. It's highway robbery. Jack, Jack, don't make a scene. Let me have the check for heaven's sake. I will not. You're my guest. All right, waiter, it's a holdup, but I'll pay it. Can you change a $50 bill? I can change it. You shut up! <laughs> Jack, it's me, Eddie, the one who wrote all those nice things about you. Like I said in my article, Jack Benny is the most generous man I've ever... You can stop with that already, too. I don't mind being generous, Eddie. But when you first came in here, you said you weren't hungry. Then you sat here and stuffed yourself. <laughs> and ran up a 65-cent bill. <laughs> well, flattery won't get you anywhere, Mr. Tander. Here's your check. Come on, Mary, let's go. But Jack, Jack! How do you like that guy? He's gone. Well, I'm glad. Waiter? How much did you say that check was? Sixty-five cents? You no, know, it's three dollars and a quarter. What? He didn't pay his either. <laughs> well, this is a fine how do you do? How do you do? Shut up! <laughs> Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Feeling low. Feeling tense. These words are common sense. Smoke to be your level best. Smoke a lucky. To be your level best. To feel your level best, smoke a lucky. For Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. It's important to know that fine tobacco can do this for you. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, LSMFT. LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Light, right naturally mild tobacco. No wonder more independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. So when you choose your cigarette, remember Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, puts you on the right level to feel and do your level best. Yes, be sure to make your next carton of cigarettes Lucky Strike. Smoke a Lucky to be your level best. Happy Mother's Day and good night, everybody. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in a day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned in for the Amos and Andy Show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.